Money laundering and terrorist financing are increasing day by day. Of course, in these circumstances, uh, every country wants to take action and increase transparency within its financial system. Well, luckily, FATF has 40 recommendations that countries can use to do that. And in this video, we'll cover some of these recommendations. But before we dive into it, if you are finding valuable my video, make sure you subscribe to FinCrime Agent and press the thumb up on this video. This will make it very easy for you to consume new videos going live on my channel and in return will allow me to create more contents for you. Now with the housekeeping done, let's jump right into today's video. Hi and welcome to FinCrime Agent. This is my YouTube channel where every week I publish a new video to boost your awareness about AML and financial crime prevention. As I mentioned in the intro, we'll be talking about some of the recommendations from FATF in this video. First, to give you all some idea, let's talk about what the FATF is. FATF, or Financial Action Task Force, is the group that sets international standards against terrorist financing and money laundering. It was established back in 1989 as a way to fight against the growing threat of money laundering to the banking system and financial institutions. Their main responsibility is to ensure that actions is taken against money laundering all around the world. And since its creation, the FATF has taken a lot of steps to counter criminal attempts and improve the financial system as a whole. The most notable one of their efforts is the series of money laundering recommendations they established in 1990. The first recommendations that were supposed to target money laundering, they were continuously reviewed according to any changes in the trends of money laundering that were identified. Later on, after the terrorist attack of 9-11, FATF also established some recommendations to fight terrorist financing. So without further ado, let's talk about some of these recommendations. Recommendation 1. Assessing risks and applying a risk-based approach. To start off, FATF recommends every country to take some time and evaluate just how much risk they face when it comes to money laundering and terrorist financing. By doing that, countries can adopt a risk-based approach and take the appropriate amount of action as needed according to the amount of risk. Even for implementing all the recommendations of the FATF, the foundation is having a risk-based approach. Of course, it means if the risk level is higher, measures taken should be more rigorous. Recommendation number two, national cooperation and coordination. Moving on, the second FATF recommendation states that each country should have a national policy for anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist financing. In simple words, this means that all businesses, government bodies and financial institutions working in, the, in that specific country need to follow the same rules and an authority should be designated that will regulate these rules all around the country. And of course, for regulation, the main thing is for institutions to cooperate with each other. This suggests that every law enforcement, um, financial intelligence unit, government body and any other authority uh, should share knowledge and information so crime can be prevented as quickly as possible. Although, as you might be aware, uh, an efficient AML and CTF information sharing system is still at the infant stage in the majority of the countries due to several challenges that are faced by the broader financial crime prevention sector. Recommendation number three, money laundering offense. Moving on, the third recommendation of the FATF deals with money laundering offenses. This includes guidelines on how a country should handle when money laundering actually happens. It states that money laundering should be made a criminal offense. Moreover, the crime of money laundering should be taken seriously and this should be applied to all serious offenses, including predicate offenses. This means uh, the acts that come before money laundering. For example, human trafficking. Human trafficking isn't actually money laundering, but the act of washing down the money earned from human trafficking is indeed money laundering. That's why when trying to counter money laundering, these predicate offenses need to be kept in mind as well. 
Recommendations number 4 and 38. Confiscation and provisional measures. Next up, the 4th and 38th FATF recommendations. I'm going to group together those two recommendations as the key message is about confiscations and provisional measures for these two recommendations. Those recommendations state that every country should establish mechanisms that will let designated authorities manage and dispose of any property that is frozen or seized or has been confiscated. These mechanisms will, of course, be applicable for domestic proceedings, but not just that, they should also be in, in accordance with any request by any foreign countries. So what are your views on the FATF recommendations I've stated so far? Do you think those are broadly followed by the industry? Would a revision be useful anytime soon? Let me know what you think in the comment down below. With that being said, let's get back to some more recommendations to cover in this video. Recommendation number five, terrorist financing offense. The fifth FATF recommendation target the terrorist financing offense. It states that countries should criminalize terrorist financing. This does not only include criminalizing the financing of terrorist acts, but also criminalizing the financing of terrorist organization and individual terrorists. These offenses need to be considered as money laundering predicate offenses by countries. The main aim of this fifth recommendation was to put emphasis on the fact that money laundering and terrorist financing are closely linked. In fact, FATF has compelled all countries to consider terrorist financing as a predicate offense for money laundering. So, in simple words, by this fifth recommendation, FATF makes sure that every country has the legal capacity to deal with the crime of terrorist financing. Moreover, this recommendation states that terrorist financing offenses should also apply to any person who directly or indirectly provides or collects funds with the unlawful intention that they should be used to carry out terrorist act by a terrorist organization or by an individual terrorist. Recommendation 6, 7 and 35. Sanctions. Moving on, the FATF has to act in accordance with the United Nations Security Council. To do that, FATF has also made recommendations that deal with financial sanctions. This is covered in the 6th, 7th and 35th recommendations of the FATF. According to the UNSC regulations, the member states should freeze the funds or assets of any person or any group of people that pose a terrorist financing risk. This also includes anyone that takes part in the financing or weapon that can be used for destruction. The country also needs to make sure that no assets or funds are even accessible by these people again. For this reason, all member countries of FATF are recommended to create their own financial sanctions and if any institutions that offer financial services in that country wants to build a relationship with a client, they should consult these sanctions list first. Recommendation 8. Non-profit organizations. Finally, the last FATF recommendations that I'll talk about in today's video, which is focused on non-profit organizations. This recommendation states that every country should review if the laws and regulations that relate to entities that can be abused for terrorist financing are sufficient or not. This especially refers to non-profit organizations considering they are more vulnerable. That's why countries need to make sure these organizations can be misused by any terrorist organizations. So that's the main objective of the 8th FATF recommendation, is there to make sure that these NPOs aren't abused by terrorist organizations to pose as legitimate entities, to exploit legitimate entities for terrorist financing or to hide the diversion of funds as legitimate purposes when they are actually being used for terrorism purposes. And with that, I come to the end of today's video. As I mentioned earlier, do let me know in the comment down below your feedback on those FATF recommendations. Also, part 2 and 3 of the FATF recommendation series will be coming out soon on my channel, so make sure 
uh, you press the bell so you can get notified and won't miss out on them. If this video was useful to you, you can show your appreciation and support my channel by subscribing to FinCrime Agent and press the thumb up on this video. Also, remember to check the description of the video to find useful links including how to become part of my community on patreon.com. And lastly, thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed today's video and until next time, see you soon.